How's it going, everyone? Got quite a bit to talk about in this video. Want to give you guys a bit of an update on The Day Before, a game that a lot of people are incredibly excited about, but at the same time, I think equally as many people, and even those same people, are very much skeptical about the game as well. We did get a bit of an update on the game. Want to talk a little bit about it and my expectations. Based on what we know thus far, the release of the game on PC is actually not that far away, and it will be coming to PlayStation 5 as well, so we'll talk about that. A free-to-play title is going to get a, a bit of a rework, as the game will be seeing a temporarily suspended service beginning in July and we'll talk that in a little bit. Also, what I am a big fan of, the Tales of titles, and it looks like more Tales of Remasters could be happening, and a very notable VR game will be coming to PSVR 2. We'll talk that briefly at the end of this video. Before we get into the video, if you want to help out the channel, make sure you hit that like button, comment down below with all of your thoughts, and if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, and also hit the bell notification icon so you are notified whenever we upload a video. Now, onto the video. But first of all, the day before, so it did get a brand new trailer showcasing enhanced ray tracing and NVIDIA DLSS 3. Now, this is a game that visually does look quite impressive. Now, if you guys don't know, as far as the day before goes, this was a game that was announced a while ago. I want to say a year and a half, two years ago, like around that time frame. It's been a long time. And then there was a PlayStation version that was officially revealed shortly thereafter, initially only designed for uh, PC, and then it got a PlayStation version announced back in late 2021. Initially, it was scheduled for release back in June of last year on PC. Then the PS5 and Xbox Series versions would come shortly thereafter. Now it is scheduled for a release on March 1st on PC, and you would expect that the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series versions would be dropping shortly thereafter. This is a game that when it dropped on Steam, it quickly shot up to becoming the most wishlisted title on Steam at that time. I believe Hogwarts Legacy has dethroned it, but still, a brand new IP uh, taking that throne as the top wishlisted game, that was incredibly surprising, and it's easy to see why. When you're talking about a game that a lot of people were saying it's Last of Us crossed with The Division, that's something that's going to immediately get people excited, and based on the gameplay that we saw... It did look incredibly compelling. The game is noted to be an open-world MMO survival set in a deadly post-pandemic America overrun by flesh-hungry infected and survivors killing each other for food, weapons, and cars. Again, an MMO... Search abandoned vehicles, houses, and skyscrapers as you scavenge for resources, crush the infected and other players with realistic weapons, becoming a legend of the new world. Explore beautiful yet dangerous places with stunningly detailed vehicles and find a colony of survivors. It's obviously a game with multiplayer in mind and, you know, teamwork, etc, etc. It's a game that you would think that people would get super invested into. However, when a game is in development this long, when it sees a plethora of delays, and you don't hear a lot as far as updates go, but we did get this trailer, people did become very, very skeptical. But, uh, you know, it is a game that it looks like it'll be dropping very soon. Like, given that it's early January right now and a game is scheduled for release on March, you would think that release date would hit. Now, we have for sure seen delays uh, you know, within a smaller window than that. I don't want you guys to expect, oh, this game is for sure not going to get delayed. It absolutely could see another delay, but currently speaking, I'm on the Steam page right now. It is scheduled for March 1st, and that uh, demo that we got, the exclusive 4K RTX on gameplay reveal, that did come from uh, NVIDIA's CES conference, and again, an open-world, massively multiplayer survival PvPVE action game set in a post-pandemic America overrun with zombies and treacherous humans killing one another for food, weapons, vehicles and generally anything they can get their hands on. I get a bit of a vibe from The Last of Us. I get a bit of that Division vibe for sure. I get a little bit of vibe from Daisy, which is a game that I played the absolute hell out of back when that mod initially dropped on Arma 2. Didn't really get into Daisy standalone, but if you can recreate that type of experience for me, that's something that's incredibly compelling. And you know, I don't want to label it as vaporware or something like that. Like, just because we do get excited about a lot of these games, and they seem to never come to fruition. Like, how many years have I been talking about Lost Soul Aside? Are we going to get it in 2023? I don't know. Hopefully. And with a game like that, I do feel like it is progressing in development. Like, there was a lot of things going on with that game. With the day before, we don't have that level of information, so... 
I just hope it turns out well. I hope we do at some point get it on PlayStation as well. If it does in fact drop on March, I'll be playing it on PC and seeing how it turns out. But uh, ultimately, I wouldn't get overly excited about it, but remain cautiously optimistic. That's kind of where I am with the day before. I know sometimes I would, back in the day, let my pessimism rule and... To an extent, I still feel that way, that why not just be pessimistic towards uh, games. So if they turn out to be really good and if they turn out to release earlier than expected or uh, the day that we're told that they're going to release, you could just be pleasantly surprised. And if pessimism rules and they get delayed or the game turns out poorly, hey, no sweat off my back. I got 8 billion other games to play. Maybe that's a very, very poor uh, world outlook, but nonetheless... Uh, that did treat me well, but with this, I'm gonna try to remain more so cautiously optimistic, and you hope for the best out of games like this, especially when so many people are incredibly excited about it. Alright, moving on from that, Deathverse Let It Die to temporarily suspend service on July the 18th, and the game is gonna be redeveloped. There's a full message from Super Trick Games, which I will get to in a second, but... The reason being, it's going to be suspending service to redevelop and fix its matchmaking and lag issues, and that has been officially announced. All sales of Death Metal, the in-game currency, will end on February the 7th, and all purchased Death Metal can be used until the service is suspended. Season 2's con new content will be released as planned, however, new content for Season 3 will only be partially released. Bear in mind, this game dropped at the end of September last year, and now it is going to be going through a bit of a redesign. So, the official message notes to all of our players, Thank you so much for your constant support of Death vs. Let It Die. We are incredibly grateful to everyone who enjoys and enriches the game and its community. There is no doubt that we experienced some challenges since the launch of our game, particularly with regards to in-game matchmaking and lag. We deeply apologize for these issues that may have caused an inconvenience to our players. While we have tried various solutions to some degree of success, we have not been able to resolve the underlying problems. As a result, the development and operations teams have made it the decision to temporarily suspend the game service while we redevelop Death vs. Let It Die. This was a difficult decision for us to make. However, we believe that re-releasing the game with significant improvements will allow it to be enjoyed by a wider audience as well as our current players. Considering how much time goes into developing a game and there's a finite number of games one can possibly make in a lifetime, it's impossible to say at this stage whether this is the right choice, but we love the game and are proud to have developed it together as a team. Therefore, we believe this is the best decision at this time. We will be doing our utmost to prepare for the re-release so that our current community can enjoy the game alongside many more new players in the future. We greatly appreciate your understanding and support. So... This is best case scenario in a lot of instances as far as redeveloping a game, especially, you know, it's a, it's a relatively mixed reception, so hopefully they can work from the ground up and then rebuild it. Look, we've seen free-to-play titles release at a very, um, let's just say mediocre state, and then ultimately they were worked on and they became something good over time. That's not always the case, and I would say that's something that happens probably a small percentage of the time, but... You know, this is a game that's very quirky, very over the top, and you just want to see games like this do well. The free-to-play market also right now in general is very, very competitive, so, you know, take that for what you will. But as far as Death vs. Let It Die, again, the service will be suspended on July 18th. It'll be redeveloped and hopefully released sometime either later in the year, early next year. Like, redeveloping and fixing all those issues is going to be quite an undertaking, so bear that in mind as well. All right, moving on from that... Tales of has been a franchise that's been really gaining a lot of steam over here stateside. You know, JRPGs aren't for everyone, but they are for me. And as far as Tales of goes, it's been pretty consistent. Berseria was great. Arise was really good. The Vesperia Definitive Edition was solid. And now we have the Symphonia remaster that is going to be dropping in February. And this has kind of been the Bandai Namco uh, game plan where they'll release a brand new Tales of Title. Then they'll uh, do a remaster. Then they'll release a brand new one. Um, and that's what's happening again. Arise came out back in late 2021. And now we have Symphonia coming out in February about a year and a half later. And Bandai Namco is suggesting that more Tales of of remasters could happen. As translated by Nintendo Everything, the quote notes, we hear from a lot of passionate fans of the series around the world that they would want to play old Tales games on the latest platform. We as a team thank all of you from the bottom of our hearts. We are currently focused on the release of Tales of Symphonia Remastered, but we await your suggestions and requests in the future. Now, the imperative there is that more remasters could happen, and that's what they've been doing. It's been a lot of remasters. 
I don't know if Bandai Namco wants to do the investment, but I really think it would be a good idea to do a full-on ground-up remake of some of these Tales of games. Look, Symphony is a classic, but it is an early GameCube title, or a mid-GameCube title. Nonetheless, it's a GameCube title. These games show their age. I mean, even Vesperia, while that game wasn't as bad, from a gameplay standpoint, it absolutely shows its age, and it's just a little bit of a bummer that we're not getting a full-on ground-up remake. Like, in the case of Vesperia, I think it's fine. It was a 360 game. That's not that old needing a remake, but I would have played a Tales of Vesperia remake. But now, since we've seen how technically good a Tales of game can be with, like, Arise, you telling me you wouldn't play Tales of Symphonia with the Arise engine and redoing that game in that style? I absolutely would. And what I've always wanted is... Like, I played Tales of the Abyss. I played Tales of the Abyss on the 3DS as well. Like, I don't need to play that game again. I would love to, but what I do need to play is that game built up, ground up from, uh, ground up and doing a full-on remake. Like, that's what I would like to see, and I think there's a market for that. And a game at the quality level and the narrative level of Tales of Abyss, I just don't think you're doing that game justice um, if you just do a remaster. And I'm sure that's one of those games that at some point, Bandai Namco is going to do a remaster, but I would rethink it and I would do a remake of that game. I think it would do just as well as if you did a brand new Tales of Game, and you already have the story, you already have the characters, you already have all that in place, so obviously it's gonna be more of an undertaking, a way bigger of an undertaking than just a simple remaster, but I would be all on board for some of these games to get a full-on remake, and then if you go to the classic, classic Tales of titles, obviously, like, you know, uh, there would be people that check, uh, would check them out, but I just think remaking them. And you see how the Final Fantasy VII remake is doing. Now, I'm not saying we have to, like, change these games from a narrative standpoint. You could if you wanted to, but I just think there's a lot of potential in these games getting full-on remakes, maybe expanding the worlds a little bit more. Um, and you could alternate, you know, doing full-on remakes and doing uh, completely new Tales of games. That's my two cents. Maybe it's something that the Tales of Studio just doesn't want to do. Maybe financially it doesn't make sense. But just thinking about it, it. Like, I feel like a Tales of Abyss a remake, a full remake, would do just as well as a brand new Tales of game. Maybe that's the craziest hot take imaginable, but I don't really see why it wouldn't. Um, I think people want to replay those games, and if they were modernized, uh, I think they would do even better than just simple HD remasters. Now, HD remasters are probably financially very lucrative. Let's be honest here. There's work done on the Symphonia remaster, but you gotta rem uh, remember, it's not a full-on remake. It's a remaster, and they're charging $50 for it. A lot of people are gonna buy it, myself included, and it's probably a very, very financially lucrative route to go to instead of the, you know, other side where it is a bit of a financial risk to do a full-on remake. That's what I would think, but, uh, you know, I don't have access to specific financials as far as that's concerned, how much money is poured in to the development of a remaster. But there you go. That's my take on that. Lastly, I do want to note, Beat Saber is coming to PSVR 2, and to the dude that wants a sale on this game, it ain't happening, just go buy it, you've been asking for a sale on this game for two years in my comments section, I feel like it's been longer, you ain't getting the dang sale, just go buy the game, it's $30, although I do believe there's quite a bit of DLC, I played the hell out of Beat Saber on PC, PC Beat Saber is pretty dope because you can mod it and you can do all that crazy stuff and uh, it's a fun game. It's a bit of a workout to be honest as well. Like, man, maybe I'm just fat, but like I get pretty tired playing Beat Saber for extended periods of time. But nonetheless, it is a ton of fun and there's some great tracks in the base game as well. So um, yeah, it'll be cool to see it come to PSVR 2. Uh, I don't know how many enhancements they can really make with the VR 2, but hey, it'll be nice to just have it. It currently is available on PlayStation VR. You can get it on Oculus, etc., etc. But now it's coming to PSVR 2 as well. And that is going to do it for me again the day before. Let me know what you guys think of it. Like, is this a game that you're still excited for? Or have you kind of pushed it aside being like, you know, it's a little bit of skepticism that is arising with that. Let me know. Death First Let It Die is going to temporarily suspend service on July the 18th as the game is going to be redeveloped. More Tales of Remasters could be happening. And while I did go off on a tangent how I would prefer remakes, look, if they ended up remastering Tales of Abyss, you know, I'm just gonna be a sucker and buy the game anyway, so, you know, they're gonna get my money regardless, but I would be all aboard uh, full-on uh, remakes for those titles. And Beat Saber coming to PSVR 2. No release date announced for that. We don't have details, and it looks like it won't be a launch game, since if it's a launch title, probably would have come together uh, by now. But that'll do it for me. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. 
Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.